Well, hello once again, farming friends, and welcome back to another edition of Farming Simulator 2015 with me, your old buddy, Mr. Moose. And today we continue on with our course play tutorials, and we're going to be looking at how to mow automatically with course play. A nice little feature to have, not a whole lot of people like mowing grass, like to automate that. Uh, and today we're going to cover how to do that for you. So we're going to be using work, uh, field work mode in course play, which is going to be our workhorse uh, of course play. This is probably the most used feature in course play. You'll use it for cultivating. Uh, you're going to use it for mowing grass, uh, maybe foraging, uh, doing teeter work, wind rowing, anything, baling hay, uh, anything you, you want to do in course play where you need to be able to automate it the field work you're going to do in field work mode so most of your work other than seeding fertilizing it's going to be done in the seed and fertilize mode but most of the rest of it's going to be done in field work so make sure we're in field work mode now course play does not recognize grass fields so as you can see we're on field 40 on our map down here in the left hand corner but field 40 is grass, so course play does not read that. Course play will only automatically read fields that have been plowed. It's looking for the variance in the two, and it can't see that in grass. So we're going to have to tell course play what the field is. Now, how do we do that? It's real simple. We just record a course around the perimeter of the field. We save that as the name of the core of the field, and that way we have field 40 defined for later use down the road to generate a course. So that's the first thing we need to do. We need to record the perimeter of the field. And we're going to do that just by pulling up here, hit start recording, and we're going to drive around the field. Now I recommend that if you're going to do this, make sure you have your mower on and um, so that way you can gauge the distance between buildings rocks, trees, things like that, so you sort of know what you're looking for. You don't necessarily have to record this uh, with the mower on. You can record it with any vehicle, but it helps out to have it on just because it will eliminate any problems down the road uh, of you running into a building or something like that with your mower and not realizing it. Uh, so I like to have the mower on when I record the course. But again, you can record with any vehicle you wanted. If you're on, like, say, uh, Westboro and you've got just big, giant fields that are wide open and there's no trees around and they're huge and you don't want to do it in the tractor, you want to get in your nice, speedy little lizard car and record the course, you can do that. Uh, you don't have to do it in the tractor. You can do it in any vehicle you want. So uh, just keep that in mind. We're going to do it, though, with the mower on because I like to know just kind of that my perimeter is clear and I'm not going to hit any obstructions. All right, so we'll come back up to the head of the course. And when we're done with that, we're going to save uh, this particular course. You don't have to come all the way up to it, but just kind of close to the starting point. Hit stop. And then we're going to save this course as field 40. All right, now that we've got that saved, I like to do a little bit of organization because we are going to be saving a couple of courses here for field 40. So let's jump into our course manager or manage courses. And we've got a subfolder up here already for field 40 that's going to allow us to store all of our stuff in. Now, how did I do that? I'm going to show you. I'm going to delete that field 40 out of there for you. And we'll start from scratch. Here's field 40 that we just recorded. This is our, our course that we're looking at right here. Now, to put that in a subfolder, we're going to come here to the subfolder button. And that's got a little star on a folder. We'll click it. It'll give us a folder name icon or box. And we'll just name that field 40. And we'll save it. And now you'll see that I have a subfolder now for field 40. The plus sign is grayed out because I don't have any courses in it. Now we come down to where we've got the course for field 40. And we're going to move it up into the subfolder. To do that, we come over. You've got your four icons here. You've got your regular folder, which is what you click to load a course. 
You've got your folder with a plus sign if you want to amend the end of a course, which is add something to it. And then you have a folder with an up triangle in it, and that's going to be the one that we use to move our, fo our course to a different location. We click it, it chooses, it comes up with choose folder, it has all the folders that are available. We just come over to the right to the folder with the down arrow, which indicates where we're going to put it, and we just click it. And now our course has been moved into the subfolder. So a nice way for you to organize your fields, courses, you can put everything in that that pertains to field 40 in that folder and keep it organized. Okay, back to course generation. Now we have our course generated. We have field 40 as our perimeter, and that's what we have loaded currently because if we look down here on the bottom it shows us that we're in field work mode and we have field 40 loaded all right so now we can go to course generation and you'll see the first line of it says field edge path currently loaded course so that means field 40 is telling course play this is what you're going to base generating a course off is the currently loaded course our perimeter that we recorded so we have our working width, which is 9.7 meters. Starting corner is going to be in the northeast as we look at our map. We're going to be running to the south. And I'm going to go ahead and have um, a, a headling cut uh, just because there's some rocks back there that I don't want to be turning on all the time. And uh, as far as return to first path, that doesn't matter for this course. So we're going to leave that deactivated. Um, just because it's not really that important right now. So, let's go ahead and generate our course. And now we have our starting point for our course. If you wanted to see the whole course, I could come to Show Waypoints. Click and it will show you the whole course. Alright. So, we're in good shape now. All we have to do is save this course. And we're going to save this as Field 40. I'm going to denote the working width of it, which is 9.7 meters. That way, if I had something else that was the same size, I could use it again. And then I'm going to denote the starting corner that we're in just by hitting northeast. All right. And uh, I could go even denote which direction we're headed by adding one more. And I could put south in. Alright, so it's telling me field 40, 9.7 meters, starting northeast, going south. I save that. I mean, you could even put in one headline and all that other stuff. It, You'll come up with your own way of saving things. It's up to you. Alright, so now that I have my course generated, I have it saved. It's showing it down here as loaded in. I do want to go ahead and move that course up into our field 40 subfolders so we have it organized and you'll see it's there with field 40 now what we have to do is drive the course we're going to activate four wheel drive uh, everything else on here speed is automatic from the recording so we let it do its own thing speed wise there's nothing else we need to do other than start the course so we'll fire up our mowers lower them down and we'll head over here to our first waypoint. And again, there's two ways of starting this. You can go ahead and tell it start course at the first waypoint. It'll pull up here, unfold everything, and start mowing. I don't like to do that. I like to drive the first couple of waypoints. And then just go ahead and hit drive control with nearest waypoint on. And it'll just resume the course. You got to drive the first couple of waypoints if you do it that way, uh, just to let it establish itself, and then uh, then it'll take off and go. If you don't, it, it'll it'll try to find the first waypoint. So always go through the first couple of them and then engage, and it'll work fine for you. But if you don't, it'll try to find the first waypoint. And that's all you got to do. Now, course play is just going to run the course. It's going to drive it, mow it, and uh, be a happy little camper. So we'll just let it do its thing and let it record. And what we'll do is we'll come back and I'm going to show you another option for mowing that allows you to mow and forge at the same time. 
so this is great the way I'm doing this it's great for setting up for hay uh, we can come back after this is finished and mowing and we can set up to teeter it then we can wind row it and then finally we can bale it and we'll go through all that in additional videos but what we're going to do now is let this do its thing and then I'm going to jump forward and we're going to show you another option for mowing which is with a front mower and a forge wagon on the back great for doing BGA work or just collecting uh, raw grass for your sheep so I'll be right back and we'll do that all right guys as you can see we've changed fields we're now over at field 41 next to the biogas facility because uh, today I'm going to show you how to mow grass with a forge wagon and uh, have that automatically dump into your BGA so we're going to do two functions here we're going to mow grass and then once we fill up our forge wagon it's going to go over and dump into the BGA so step one just like at field 40 we've got to record the perimeter of the field that we're going to mow so let's bring up course play we'll clear out the course that we had previously loaded and we're going to start our recording and just I'm going to do this without the forge wagon on the back because it doesn't play any account into this all I want to see is the uh, the front here to make sure it's not going to hit on anything so we'll just kind of roll through here come across the top of the field leave ourselves a little bit of headway there for turns come down the side And then we'll come back over to the beginning of the course where we recorded. And that is going to give us our perimeter. So let's go ahead and stop that. And we'll save it just like before. Field 41. Oops, not filed. We'll organize that by putting it into our Field 41 subfolder. So let's just bring that up and drop it in and that's that now we're not going to move forward just yet we need to go ahead and generate our course that we're going to mow and again we're using the currently loaded course our mowing width is only going to be as wide as our front mower so we need to recalculate that 3.6 meters we're going to be starting this time if we turn and back up so you can see on the mini map correctly we're going to be starting in the northwest corner and we're going to be headed south to initiate and this time I'm going to change the direction that we turn we were going clockwise before we're going to start here we're going to be going counterclockwise so I need to switch that and I'm going to mow about three headlands on this uh, just to give myself uh, plenty of room for turns and stuff like that not running into the street and everything else like that so that looks good we'll generate that course and we're going to save this and once again it's field 41 3.6 meters and it starts in the northwest headed south and we just go ahead and save that for us. So field 41, 3.6 meters, northwest, headed south. That's saved. Now there's one more course we need to record. We need to record our course that is going to drop everything and, um, and take us to the BGA when the forge wagon is full. So we have to have a course that takes us to it. And so we're just going to pull over here sort of to the middle of the field. And you can start wherever you want. I like to kind of have it in the middle of the field. Uh, that way it doesn't have as far to drive to find it. So about here is pretty good for me. So we'll set this up. And we're going to record a course that is going to take us into the BGA and allow us to dump. So we'll clear out the currently loaded course. And again, this is where 
once the forage wagon is set up, course play is going to tell the tractor, okay, you need to drive to the end of the course real quick, then drive to the starting point of the of the path to the BGA, and then drive into the BGA dump, come back to the field, and then resume mowing. That's what it's going to do. By starting my course in the very center, it's less of a transition for course play. It transition, it drives real slow. So the reason I start in the center, it gives me less time when it drives real slow. It will actually pick up at a regular pace and run. Uh, you know, like in transition, it only runs about six miles an hour. Driving the course at full speed, it'll go about 18 miles miles an hour so or whatever you have it set for so that's the reason I put my starting point in the center of the field it's just less of a transition time so let's go ahead and record that course we'll start recording and we're just gonna head over here to the BGA so up for the gate come on in now here's the thing with the BGA. The tip on it is going to be automatically set up by the triggers. And the BGA will tell you what is available. If like this has got silage in it. So if I'm automated, it will not dump in this bunker because the silage is in it. So I can just kind of go through it. And I'm going to record to go through each and every bunker. Because that way, if I've got something in a bunker and it can't dump, it can always go to the next one and dump in it. So that's the reason I'm going to weave in and out of all the bunkers. Now, you could do one course for each bunker, or you could do one course. You can only use one bumper bunker. It's up to you. Um, but I go ahead and just weave my course through all four bunkers. And that way, as it fills up, if, I've, if I'm at 80% full and it goes into a bunker and fills it all the way up, uh, it'll just progress to the next bunker and start filling it up. Uh, let's say I've got silage already in bunker one, and I've got 80% in bunker two, and I'm doing letting it mow, it, it will not dump one, it will fill up two, and then it'll move and start filling up three, uh, once three has enough uh, in it. Or once two is full, my bad. Hope you understand that. Anyway, so the course is recorded. We don't have to come all the way back into the field. Just the perimeter is fine. So we stop this. And I'm just going to say field 41 to BGA. All bunkers. And that will just tell me that this pattern weaves in and out of all the bunkers uh, to, clean, to, to fill it up. Because, yes, sometimes I have passed to certain bunkers. Sometimes I have it set to do all of them. It just depends. Um, on some of my maps, I have broken bunkers that don't take silage into them. Uh, you may have seen a video on, on my big country where only bunker two will accept uh, fresh chaff so I have to uh, I have to uh, use a different bunker for that so all right let's go ahead and organize this I'm gonna go ahead and jump up field 41 BGA all bunkers I'm gonna drop that into the field 41 thing and now we are good to go I'll clear out my thing clear out my thing clear out my course We'll go over here, we'll load up our forage wagon, and we'll put all of this to use and mow some grass. All right, head back to our starting point down here. So this is where you combine courses. And to combine courses, all you do is you select a course, you select your second course that works with it, and um, and you go from there. This comes in handy. You'll use this a lot when seeding, fertilizing. You'll use combined courses because you'll have your seeding course, and then you'll also have your um, refill course, to where when you run out of seed, you can automatically refill your uh, your seed your uh, seeder. 
All right, so let's load our courses. To do that, we're in Manage Courses. We have no courses loaded. We're going to come to Field 41. Oh, and I didn't put this course into the subfolder. So, all right, now we're good. All right, come to our Field 41. First thing we're going to load is our course that we're going to mow. That's the Field 41 3.6 meter northwest south. We're going to load it by clicking the solid folder here. And you can see that's loaded that course in. And then I'm just going to tilt up a little bit so you can see. And now we're going to add a second course in, which is going to be our dump course once the forge wagon gets full. And that's our Field 41 to BGA all bunkers. I click that. And you can see it added that course in as well. So if we come up over here and we start to mow, we can use this. And at this point, everything's going to be automated. So we'll just pull up underneath here. I'm going to select full drive activated. And I'm going to come over here. I'm going to drive through my first couple of waypoints. Getting everything straight, and then I'm going to say drive course, and off it runs. And we'll just let that follow the course, and it will fill our forge wagon up with nice little grass. And we'll just fast forward this until we have a full truckload of grass and as soon as it does it's going to um, pick itself up and begin our forge course so that's what we'll do through the magic of editing all right so we can go ahead and slow things down a little bit here and as you can see we're just about full up on this forge wagon uh, hindsight i probably could have used a smaller forge wagon for this field um uh and uh that way it would have tipped a little bit sooner but this is the one i have on this particular map and uh, so when it hits 100 percent it's going to stop where it is and it's going to run over to the p up in the upper right hand corner which is the end of the course and it's going to turn drive back to the center of the course and then it's going to head into the BGA so let it make its turn get its last couple of percent the course play will also make a note of where it stops and that way it can come back and resume the rest of the field so this is really handy like this field not so much it's a small little grass field i used it to demonstrate on but if i had the small beginning forage wagon on here that only holds uh you know 18,000 liters uh that would be three four trips out of this field so here it is it's headed over here to the end point and it's going to pick up the course that takes it in transition to the center of the field And then as soon as it grabs that course, it'll haul on over to the BGA. It's going to go inside. And it'll weave through all four of the bunkers, finding one that he can dump in. And the nice thing about using course play for this is as it goes through the BGA and it does start to dump, it's not going to dump in one big pile. It's going to spread it out all the way across the bunkers. Uh, and that way you don't have a big heap on one end of it. So uh, this one it's not going to dump in because it has silage in it. It will make its turn. The next one's got... I'm not sure what's in there. It could be corn chaff. Um more than likely it's just grass I actually think it's grass chaff from using the crone big X it probably won't dump on top of that yeah it is gonna dump so here we go it'll start just dumping little bits at a time
continuing to fill up this bunker. If this bunker was complete 90%, 80% full, when it got to 100%, it would stop dumping, and then it would proceed to dump in bunker 3. But uh, this will probably all go into this one single bunker. It'll probably stop right there and put the rest of it in. Yeah. Okay. And so it will continue to weave out of three and four. Uh, again, just consider that this is a multi purpose course for me uh, to be able to just use whichever one is available at the time. You may choose to do that, you may choose not to. But it will follow itself back around on the course head on out and then it will go back into the field and resume mowing where it left off so this is a nice little way for you to automate your grass mowing for the BGA uh, it's especially handy like I said in the beginning stages where you have one mower head and that small you know you can only afford the small forage wagon uh, it's going to help you out a whole lot and um that way you can get it done without having to spend the entire time. You can be working on seeding a field and mowing grass at the same time. So, All right, so it runs back over here. It knows exactly where it needs to pick up. And it resumes mowing course. And that's it. A nice, simple way for you to automate that using course play. That's going to wrap up this video for today on our course play tutorial for mowing grass. There's much more you can do with it. Uh, follow the rest of the course play tutorials. You'll learn a lot more about how to utilize course play. And by mixing and matching certain aspects of it, there's uh, the, the amount of things that you can do with course play is endless. All right. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you give me a thumbs up. It just lets me know you're watching. You like what we're doing. And uh, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I do do a new video each and every day. So come on back and enjoy those. Until next time, I'm Mr. Moose. This has been Course Play Tutorials for Farming Simulator 2015. Stay safe. Have a great day. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks again for watching this video, and if you made it all the way to the end, well, maybe you liked it. So give me a big old thumbs up. That like goes a long way. Also, subscribe to this channel. I will update the videos every single day, so there will always be something new for you to see. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll come back again tomorrow. Thanks for your support.